Hello brothers and sisters in Christ. I have a quick and a very, very important prayer request from a brother in Christ. Um, I was going to move the banner because it's like right behind me, but when I watched the video I looked at it and right above my head you could see Holy Bible Authorized Version 1611. It's above my head. God's Word is above me. I conform to it. <laughs> I don't put it below me and make it conform to me. But I put a poster board up there, and I'll explain why here in a second. I'm going to do like a prayer board, but to help me remember, there's so many people I like to pray for every day. So, um, I want to go ahead and read this email that I got from a brother in a request for prayer. Dear Brother Philip, just wanted to let you know, let you know I'm praying for you, that the Lord would comfort you and keep you strong during this time. Your videos, and thank you for your prayer, brother, and thank you for everybody's prayer out there. Yes, physically and spiritually, we all need prayer to stay strong. Um, and I appreciate all the prayer from the brethren. Your videos have been a real blessing and encouragement for me as I strive to serve the Lord without compromise. Praise the Lord. I failed recently and really compromised. And if people are getting stuff out of my videos, praise God. All glory be to God. And thank you, Lord, for using me. I thank Him all the time. And I get really excited, too, when I do Bible studies. I really enjoy them. Some days it's like I don't see what I'm supposed to be studying. I don't get it. Or I'll type something out and it just doesn't feel right. And it just. But for the most part, I love doing my Bible studies with the Lord. And I like watching Bible studies. Please keep them up as I can testify that the Lord is using you to encourage the brethren. I sent you an email introducing myself several months back, not realizing you were in the midst of a major fiery trial yourself during that time. I did. I kind of didn't keep track of people during that time, and I got a few emails, and then, like I said, I, I apologize once again to the brethren for not keeping up on the emails and emailing people back. Um, you are surely not alone. I am currently dealing with a situation myself where my wife and children have all turned against me because, I, because of the stands I choose to take for Jesus Christ. They, want, they don't want to bear the same reproach from family and friends, so they choose to mingle with the ways of, the, of this world and man-made religion. In other words, this brother in Christ came to the knowledge of the truth and he's like, I'm not going to the Babel buildings, which we'll find out shortly. And I want to start standing for God. I want to start standing for the Godhead. I want to start standing for the King James Bible, God's perfect written word, dispensational teaching, pre-time of Jacob's trouble, catching away the body of Christ, eternal security, on and on. And he's talking about, okay, I want to change life. And he's changing his surroundings as far as getting rid of the sin and doesn't want the temptation. And it's very hard being in a home where one of you is saved and one of you is lost. I know this, especially with what I went through recently. They don't want to bear the... Okay. Man-made religions, where we left off. I'm literally living in a war zone in my own house and my heart is grieving, grieved continually as I see my wife and children being swept away by false man-made religion. Babel buildings. My wife continues to attend Mount Zion Baptist Church in Denver, Pennsylvania. Same church Brother Brian uh, over at King James Video Ministries attended several years ago before he saw their error. And I did a re video recently and this brother let me know about how bad they're getting there. Okay? I did it. It's called Who Needs the Godhead? We Have the Trinity. Without her spiritual head, myself, and the leadership there is encur there is encourage her I have a hard time. Encouraging her to continue in her rebellion as they think I am grievous in grievous sin and error for leaving their church. You know, because they do works to be saved. <laughs> and if you don't go to church, then that's a, you're you're not saved. Uh, He's, uh, nine months ago is when he stopped going to church. Praise the Lord. Especially that place. Praise the Lord. Now that I departed from the false church system, the Lord just continues to lead me into so much truth. It is overwhelming how much truth the Lord has shown me through His Word ever since I left the church system. 
and I've heard this story a lot. I have the same story. Ever since I, I was a false convert most of my life, and when I truly got saved, that's when God started showing me His Word and opening the Scriptures to me. Right. I am convinced that God, God's true shit sheep will never feel at home and find peace within churchianity. <laughs> In other words, these Babel buildings. And they won't, and you won't. They will eventually come to the truth after a time of inner turmoil as they see all the corruption within. You know, remember I told you that. Uh, gosh, what was I about to say? Won't find peace in church, Annie. Um, I was, when I was a false convert in these battle buildings, you have to run 90 miles an hour to keep from realizing, and they do, they try to keep you busy and distracted to realizing that you're really lost, you have no peace, no joy, okay? You really have no knowledge of God's perfect written word other than parroting PWC, Polly Want a Cracker, parroting what people say. And he says, which is what happened to me. God opened his eyes. Once again, praise the Lord. The Lord used Brian Dillinger to open my eyes to why I was in so much turmoil and lacking peace while attending the IFB church. I was just listening to a sermon put out by Keith Schweitzer, who is the pastor where my wife and children attend, and I was completely shocked at what I heard. And I'm reading the email, trying to save paper, and I'm out of black ink. All right. Completely shocked at what I heard. So was I. And that's why I did that uh, quick video. If you, want, I'll link it about... Um, gosh, I wish my brain didn't freeze sometimes. Who needs the Godhead? We have the Trinity. They're trying to get rid of the Godhead and put it over to the side and make it out like it's nothing. And he showed me this video and I looked it up. Um, the sermon is titled, Given Up Your Religion for a Relationship, which is ironic since he is practicing false religion, and they are, at the same time telling his congregation that it is not about religion but relationship. Okay. See, it's not about this brother's relationship with the Lord, it's about him going to church. Religion. Okay. He's lost because he doesn't go to church. You have to listen to a short clip just to understand where these people truly stand in regards to the biblical Godhead versus the Trinity. And it was appalling. It's further proof that he is worshipping a false idol and literally leading my family to hell with his false, unbiblical beliefs. And when I read this, it's just got the feeling that, bottom line, these Babel buildings are becoming occultic, okay? His wife should trust her husband, as long as he's going off the Word of God, and he's not going against the Word of God. Where in the Bible does it say, where we commanded to build a building, call the church, and then invite lost and save people to it? Where are we commanded to go to church? Right? You're not. Okay? It seems like they're uh, the cult of personality. They're being drawn in to these Babel buildings, and they've gotten so used to the social high and being around people. One of the reasons we suffer as Christians today is because of loneliness. We suffer for the Lord, that is. We suffer for Jesus Christ. One of the ways is loneliness. And people, some people can't stand it. They have to have that cult of personality. They've got to have that uh, social atmosphere, not fellowship, social atmosphere and the fun and everything. They can't handle being alone. Some days it's hard for me to be alone. But you know what? I'd rather be alone than fellowship with the lost world. Okay, he tells me where to go in the video which I did and showed everybody, the brother and sisters in Christ. I think you'll be shocked at what he says. I knew he denied the biblical Godhead, and they do, these Babel buildings. But this just makes it much more evident. It makes me so much more grieved that my wife and children are following a blind leader. And I threw a lot of verses in that video I did. Yeah, blind leader. The blind leading the blind. Okay? And why is that? If you watched my study on salvation for lost sinners, part three belief, it's because the Jesus of Scripture, the Jesus Christ, isn't as appealing as a Jesus Christ. Okay? 
any uh, Jesus Christ that's okay with you have in the world. You believe what you want. This book conforms to you. Your Jesus Christ conforms to you. You don't conform to Jesus Christ and obey Him. You don't conform and make sure your stand, that your life is based off this book and conform to this book. Make sure you line up with this book. Oh no, the book's got uh, conform to you. It's no longer thus saith the Lord, it's thus saith my preferences. There's, there is much, much more the Lord has shown me in regards to how full of lies and errors this pastor slash church is. Once again, praise the Lord, he got you out of that, brother. And there's a lot of other people out there, too, I've talked to that, and I've seen comments where they're like, well, I still go to church. They say amen to Brother Brian and King James Video Ministers and their teachings, and they'll say amen to my teachings, yet our teachings go against these Babel buildings. And yet there's people that are still going to these Babel buildings. Uh, you need to have the courage to get out of them. And they are the church slash denomination that prides themselves in following the Bible in all matters of faith and practice. Crazy. Let me know your thoughts. I, mean, I looked it up. They believe in the Trinity, and now they're saying the Godhead isn't part of the Trinity. The word Godhead has nothing to do with the Trinity. The Trinity has come completely different. So they're getting rid of the Godhead. But yeah, they say that the King James Bible is their foundation on matters of faith and practice, and it isn't. Okay. They're deceiving people. But people don't care about the Word of God. They care about the social atmosphere. Uh, the sense of family and not being alone. And he does a little lot of good verses. He puts a lot of good verses here. Uh, Romans 8.28 And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to His purpose. Um, uh, Proverbs 3.5 Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not on thine own understanding. Um, one of the verses I like is okay, Philippians 4.13 I can do all things through Christ with strength in me. Okay. If you could please pray for me. I still pray for this brother and I'm asking you brothers and sisters in Christ out there if you could pray for this brother. Um, and he's not the only one that, that's going through this. I went through it. I know there's other people out there where the wife is saved and the husband's lost, or the husband's saved and the wife is lost, and it is not easy. And it does feel like a war zone, because spiritually it is a war zone. Okay. As I mentioned earlier, I'm literally living in a war zone. It's gotten so bad that after much prayer, I've come to the realization that moving out is the only solution for peace. Now, real quick. I gave him the advice, and I'm going to give you, brothers and sisters, the same advice. My situation, it wasn't because I didn't have peace. I didn't have peace. My situation is she became physically violent and verbally violent, and it was unhealthy for us to be under the same roof to, together. That's why I had to force her to go back to her family. If you want to uh, read in more in depth what happened, the video is Apologies to the Brethren, and warning to the single brethren out there. I think it's what it's called. But I talked to this brother, and I talked to him, and I talked to you guys. Are you being, is, you, is your life or your health being threatened to be in the same house as the opposite, whether it's the husband or the wife? No. Okay, have they committed adultery? No. Then you need to stay. Okay, and this is why we'll get to it. I requested many times that my wife please allow me the freedom to leave my home according to how the Lord is leading, and she refuses. I'm literally confined in my office for the majority of the day. I run my business from home because of the sore vexation I feel being around my family with all the false ways and conversations they bring into the home. Now, I told him that uh, if you can, try to find things that aren't sinful for you and your family to do together. Spend time with your kids. Um, it's tough, but, you know, talk to your kids about the Lord. Talk to them about the Bible. You can't force salvation on your children. I had a sister in Christ say she needed prayer because her children once believed in the Lord, and now they don't because they're like in their teenage, like 15, 16 years old. Well, there is no I once believed and now I don't. They never believed to begin with. You don't force feed your children the salva uh, biblical salvation. You teach them, you raise them in the admonition of the Lord, and you teach them what the Word says. You teach them 
You're not to lie. Why? Because God's word says not to. Not to bear false witness. Uh, we don't put evil and wicked things before, before us. We don't have wicked things in our home. Why not? Because the Bible says, abstain from all appearance of evil. And so on and so forth. You teach your children that the, the why you live your life is because that's what God commands you to as a Christian. That's why you live your life the way you do. You tell them about Jesus Christ. You tell them about the Old Testament stories and everything. And when they get older and get to the age of accountability, it's going to be between them and God. If they choose the world, you did, and you did raise them in the admonition of the Lord, according to this Word of God, you didn't fail them. Okay? You didn't fail God. But you need to stay there. Find some good things to do. Um, my prayer... For, my prayer, first and foremost, has been that the Lord opens my wife's eyes to the truth that I can lead, to the truth of the scriptures is what I'm praying, that God gives her every opportunity to understand true biblical salvation and to understand that that Babel building is poisoning her and destroying her family. Okay? My prayer, first and foremost, has been that the Lord opens my wife's eyes to the truth so that I can lead that we can live in unison and raise our children in the nature and admonition of the Lord, as I talked about. Uh, and I'm praying for this, brother. He needs prayer. And there's other people out there that need our prayer that are in the same situation. It's been nine months and she has doubled down in her stance against me, and our home is no longer a healthy environment for us and the children. Like I said, I've already talked to him. Spiritually, it's unhealthy because the children are getting confused. Dad's saying one thing, Mom's saying another. But the number one reason I believe that she's doubling down in her stance against her husband is that Babel building. Okay? The Babel building that's Satan whispering in her ears, poisoning her ears, turning her against her husband. The Lord is giving me peace in just letting my wife and children go. God, I just, I want to get into this. God can give you peace without you having to let your wife and children go. And I'll talk about this. As I am no longer welcome as the leader in my own home, please pray that God works all the details out with this situation and that I would stand fast and be unwavering as I follow Jesus Christ. Was it stand, stand, stand? Don't falter, don't faint. Okay? Your brother in Christ Jesus. Okay? Now, I talked to him, and I'll quote some scripture here real quick, but find things that you and your wife and kid can do together, kids can do together that's not sinful. And like I said, you keep standing for the Word of God. The kids are going to be confused sometimes, but you, you don't sit there and try to correct. Every time your wife says something, you have to correct her in front of your kids. Just when you're around your kids, stand for the Word of God and what's right. In your life, stand for what's right. Okay? And I told him, you want peace in your life um, when you're going through that hardship? I stayed in Bible studies with what I went through that was just a nightmare and sheer terror I stayed in God's Word. I sang hymns. I went for a walk with, uh, I have uh, cue cards. And I advise you that you're in the same situation. I had cue cards where I had memory verses. One stack was key scriptures every Christian should know. One stack is um, eternal security. And I haven't got around to it, but I want to do a stack on, I'm sorry, one stack is on uh, salvation. All these salvation verses. And I want to do a stack on eternal security, a stack on Godhead verses. You know, just something that you can read verses and fellowship with the Lord when you're walking out in God's creation and nature. Um, you know, go for walks. Um, I'm going to try to email him and keep in contact with him to encourage him. And I want to encourage you, brothers and sisters of Christ out there that are in the same situation. Um, I have an email address for the, for the ministry God's let me do here. And if you're a woman... I can try to put you in touch with some godly women to fellowship with, to help keep you strong when you're married to a man who's lost. And men, you know, I'm here to talk for you, and I can, you know, put you in touch with some brothers in Christ that can talk with you also um, to encourage you and keep you to not compromise like I did and stand, stand, stand for the Word of God and live according to this book. Okay? Now, what was it? One thing I told him, the hard part is Matthew 10, 34. Think not that I've come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I'm come to set a man at variance against his father, and a daughter against her mother, 
and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's foe shall be they of his own household. And here is the toughest, toughest part. Trust me, I have a daughter that I love, and I, my ex-wife now, I have a wife that I loved. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it, and he that loseth his life shall, for my sake shall find it. In the end, this is the harsh reality, but in the end, something's going to happen. Either they're going to get saved, or that things are going to fall apart. And, and I, like I said, I'm almost about to cry about it. That's the truth of the matter. My daughter, she's fallen more and more away from me to the point where she really doesn't want anything to do with me. She's even told me that several times. She, I used to read the Bible with her. We used to look up pictures online when it came to the Bible, different places, animals, rocks. When it said, you know, things that are in the rocks, I forgot the name of them, but they're like, kind of like big ferrets and, not ferrets, gerbils and stuff like that. I mean, we used to have fun reading the Bible together when she was really young. But the world's gotten a hold of her, and she's just totally lost into the world. And she knows the truth. I've told her the truth. I told her about Jesus Christ because she's 15, going to be 15 soon. She really doesn't want much to do with me. Why? Because I don't compromise. My home's a godly home. She comes to visit me. There's no video games here. And she is addicted to video games. There's no movies, TV shows. I don't allow worldly music in this home. Okay? I, don't, I make a stand. This home is a godly home. And, that, and in the end, she doesn't really want to come over. She doesn't want to be here. You have to love God more than you love your family. You have to love God more than you love your wife. Don't compromise. But remember, like he preached before, all things work together for good that trust God to those that are called according to his purpose. I hope I got that right. Um, right here, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. God has a plan for you. And one of the biggest things is... Right here, 2 Peter 1.19. We have also a more sure word of prophecy whereunto ye, unto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn. And that day star arise in your hearts. I told him he needs to stay. Like I said, if it's not an unhealthy atmosphere, they haven't the other person hasn't committed adultery, you need to stay and be a light. He's losing peace because I, I feel that I'm trying to give them advice, and you, brothers and sisters in Christ out there, they're going through the same thing. They need to see God in you. They need to see that light. It's going to be tough. You're going to have hard times. There's going to be pressure. But they need to see the joy and peace that God has for you. Start singing hymns. When you get down, start singing some hymns. Just walk around the house as you're doing work. Sit, memorize some hymns and start singing some hymns. Okay? Um... Go for walks, spend a lot of time praying and talking with the Lord, do Bible studies, okay? Find some things you can do with your hands that you can give glory to the Lord, okay? They need to see that light in you, and that light will shine on them, and there's, like I said, it's still between them and God, but God's going to use you in that situation. He's going to use you, okay? And even when you're in that kind of situation, God can still give you peace, I went through sheer terror, and yet there were times when God gave me peace. God gave me joy. And anything, I think that upset her more. I didn't mean to upset her. I just, I was focusing on the Lord, praising the Lord, singing hymns a lot. And, like I said, I understand having someone, being married to someone who's lost and hates you and hates the Lord. Okay? Uh, I understand that. You make a stand, you say, I'm not compromising, I'm going to stand for the Word of God, and they start to hate you. Okay? But remember what Jesus said, if they hate you, they hated me first. So it is encouragement that it's a good thing to suffer for Jesus Christ. But be a light. Okay? Be a light for your family. Uh, be a light. For your husband, be a light for your wife, stand for the Word of God. And one thing I point out is Ephesians, um, I think it's 2 5. 
Let's look at that. Ephesians is after Galatians. Make sure I do it right. No. <laughs> I forgot to put the one in there, but since we know it starts at 25, let's find a chapter that goes all the way to 25. I'm so sorry about this. Here it is. Okay. It's actually chapter 5. The changed life chapter. Chapter 5, verse 25. Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify it and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Thus he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So all men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. True love for his wife is going to be continuing to preach the word to her. God's word says this. God's word says that. And if they get angry with you, don't compromise. Stand for the word of God and do it out of meekness and out of love. Don't get... I got drawn into a lot of arguments. A lot of debating and argument and it's not going to be easy. You're going to get cute. Don't debate with them. Don't argue with them. Just say, God's word says this. Right? Well, why won't you spend time with us when we're doing such and such? Well, God's word says I'm abstained from all appearance of evil. That's evil and wicked. Right? So, this brother needs prayer, and so does everybody else out there that needs, uh, that's in the same situation. Desperately needs prayer. I understand what he's talking about when he says it's a war zone. A complete war zone. So, so I'm doing this. Uh, this brother in Christ sent me a picture and his name and his wife and his kids and their name. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start doing a prayer board. So with my email address, if you don't have to, but I'm going to start people I chat with on um, YouTube that I know that are saved, uh, ministries, the, the person that's in that ministry, that God's put in that ministry, that I know that is saved. I'm going to start putting pictures on that board because it helps me to remember and remind me every day to pray for everybody. And like I said, part of this ministry is to motivate prayer, to encourage and also to uh, encourage your walk with the Lord in your day-to-day -day life, to give you encouragement, but to also encourage you to pray. Give God thanks for everything, glory for everything, and come to God when you have problems like this. When you're going through something like this, like this brother of Christ is, you come to the Lord in prayer. So, um, I'll try to link the um, uh, prayer email. Uh, I said, was it prayer and testimony email? And this guy, is, even though he doesn't realize it, he's given a testimony. Okay, God changed his life. And he's trying to stand firm, and he is standing firm, and he's going through a lot because he's standing for the Word of God. All right? It's a great testimony. So, hang in there. Be the light. God will give you peace. God will give you joy. Just keep standing for the Word. Do the things like I said. Memorizing scripture, singing hymns, doing Bible studies, doing work with your hands that you can glorify God with. You can't glorify God with video games, movies, and TV shows. You know, all these people that are addicted, you can't do it. Find something you can physically do that you can give God glory and thanks for. Okay? So I love my brothers and sisters in Christ. Please keep this brother in prayer. And keep me in your prayers for, like I said, the ministry that God will keep using me. And that my health will get better. Um, like I said, it's nothing that I can do. It's, I give God all the glory. Everything He teaches me. And any time I make a mistake... I'm the one that made the mistake, not God. Okay? So, I love my brothers and sisters in Christ. Grace and peace be with you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. And my love for you in Christ Jesus. See you in the next video.